Check it in. Your local news is next. There is breaking news out of the Philippines where the death toll is climbing after a hotel fire. And the controversy continues for Massachusetts acting Governor James Swift. Those stories and more is Live at 11 starts right now. Now, the Capital Region's number one late news, News Channel 13, Live at 11. Tonight's top story, caught in a lie. The acting governor of Massachusetts says she was trying to protect her husband by lying on their marriage certificate. This is News Channel 13, Live at 11. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ed Day. Lydia has the night off tonight. This is not the first time that Swift has been under fire. You may remember the controversy when she acknowledged using state aids to babysit for one of her daughters. And just this week, her gay stepson publicly criticized her stance on legal gay marriages. Well, tonight, it is Swift's own marriage's legal papers which are causing problems. Because she admits she lied on her marriage certificate. The governor says she knew Chuck Hunt had been married to three other women before her, but as you can see, that's not what was written on their marriage application, which claimed the marriage would be Hunt's second. Imagine Swift said she did it to protect her uh, husband's privacy. It, and I uh, recognize uh, in retrospect it was not a good decision. Swift's hometown of North Adams has always been home to some of her fiercest allies, but that doesn't necessarily mean they always agree with what she did. If she's going to lie about that, what else is she going to lie about? It's an important office, you know, it's, it's not mayor, you know, it's a, it's a big deal. She's running a large state, which I've lived in my entire life, and, you know, people are really looking for their uh, politicians and leaders, to be honest. Swift says she will pay any fine she may face because of the law. I accept responsibility for having uh, made a misguided decision, and I will... Um, subject myself to the consequences of that. Swift says she will also amend the marriage certificate, and while that may fix the paperwork, some political analysts say this latest controversy will be something voters will remember. Hundreds of people are competing at a local basketball tournament. Their goal is more than just winning a game. Karen Mull will have their story right after Bob Kabachik joins us from the Weather Center with a first look at our forecast, Robert. But hi, Ed. Good evening, everybody. On this Friday night, a pretty pleasant night. Temperature settling back into the upper 60s right now. We'll see a temperature near 64 first thing tomorrow morning with some sunshine around and uh, a pretty decent Saturday. We don't expect any rain with a mix of clouds and sun around 76 in the midday period and close to 80 in the late afternoon. Again, partly sunny or partly cloudy as you wish will uh, prevail during the day. After that, things do go downhill on Sunday. We'll have more on that coming along in a few minutes. Well, that Sunday's not good news, Bob, because a couple of hundred kids are hoping the rain holds off all weekend for the fifth annual Summertime Love Basketball Tournament. That's in Arbor Hill. Day one of the tournament kicked off today. Our Karen Moe caught a game, joins us live from the newsroom to tell us all about it. Karen. And the kids who are competing in this tournament are gifted athletes from all over the state. This is not only a chance for them to show off their skills, but an opportunity to lead them in a positive direction. If money go this way, the, the, the wing on Aaron Barnett coaches this team from an Albany YMCA, not just because he likes basketball, but because he says he cares about his players. If they weren't involved in something like this, they could be involved with in something negative. And um, as long as our kids are involved in something positive, I'm happy. Giving kids a positive outlet to channel their energy and frustrations is the reason Brian Hines says he began this tournament five years ago. This changes their whole attitude, you know? I mean, if we can just get these kids to think different like that for three days, it might lead into a month, six months to a year or forever, you know what I mean? Yeah. So this is definitely a road we need to take. About 225 kids from across New York State have come here to play ball this weekend, and it's not just the guys who are strutting their stuff on the court. We the best. We all go to WNBA. These girls have goals they intend to attain, and they say it's all because this sport has led them in the right direction. It keeps you, you know, out of the street, you know, keeps you to not doing drugs, you know. It, it's just the positive things. It, it's fun. It's just really fun. And the fun this weekend isn't costing players any money to compete. There was a $200 fee for each team to participate, but they all found sponsors to cover the cost. Ed, back to you. Well, we'll have Bob work on the Sunday afternoon weather, and we'll be just fine. That sounds good. Karen Moe in the newsroom. Thank you. Grief counseling will continue at Taconic Hills High School tomorrow after the death of a former high school football player. 19-year-old Dana Bassett Jr. killed after colliding head-on with another car in North Greenbush this morning. Bissett was on his way to football practice at Hudson Valley Community College. He played for Taconic Hills 
last year. Police are still investigating the cause of the crash. We do know the driver of the other car, 76-year-old George Roden, remains in critical condition tonight at the Albany Medical Center. An accident about five hours earlier in Stillwater also claimed the life. 45-year-old Peter Hoffman apparently lost control of his car while driving along Route 32. His car crossed lanes, hit a pole, and flipped over. A passing motorist came upon the scene and called police, but police say by the time they got there, Hoffman was already dead. No word yet on what caused that accident. Counselors also on hand today at schools in East Greenbush to help students there cope with the death of Nicholas Pablo, that 12-year-old killed Wednesday when he and a cousin were walking all along a road in Schuyler Falls near Plattsburgh. The driver of the car, 32-year-old Deborah Amell, charged with driving while ability impaired and leaving the scene of a fatal accident. What would you do if you saw someone you were sure was driving drunk? Well, watch what happened in Pittsfield, because 78-year-old Stephen O'Connell was arrested for driving under the influence this morning. Witnesses say they saw his car swerving down Dalton Avenue. So when his car stopped, two other drivers got out of their vehicles, opened O'Connell's door, and took his keys. They then called police. Normally uh, approve of, but in this particular case, I'm sure that they saved uh, this gentleman and possibly others from serious injury. Along with the drunk driving charge, you might see why here for, I guess, maybe not, but O'Connell also charged with resisting arrest. A drug raid in Albany last night turned up much more than just drugs. Police say when they raided a basement apartment on Clinton Avenue, they also found three pit bulls that were obviously being abused. They also uncovered equipment for training the dogs to fight, including weights, cages, heavy chains, and prodding sticks. Police arrested one person for a misdemeanor marijuana charge. They won't say if they expect him to lead them to whoever abused the dogs. Police do tell us, though, they have made 21 arrests at the same address since October. A Gilderland woman says she will lock her doors from now on after finding a stranger standing right in the middle of her house last night. Faye Diamond was taking a shower in her Western Avenue home when she thought she heard a strange noise, but she just brushed it off. She says she got quite a surprise when she opened her bathroom door. A man who looks like this, we'll show you the composite, was standing in her living room. I screamed, he yelled. I went toward and towards him and then he took off out, out, out my back door. If you think you recognize this man, you're asked to contact the Gilderland Police Department. Diamond says this man is about five feet, eight inches tall, and that he probably weighs something like 190 pounds. For more than a decade, Peter Ferracci has been affectionately known as Santa Claus to many people in and around Catskill. But on the day after last Christmas, he was diagnosed with a really rare cancer. Tonight in Catskill, his family held a Christmas in August benefit to raise money to help him fight the disease. Karen Lehan was there. She joins us now live to tell us more. Karen. Hi, Ed. Well, as you say, a dozen years ago, Peter Ferracci says he noticed that there was no Santa in the town of Catskill for the kids, so he gave himself the job, and now he finds himself relying on the kindness of strangers. Ho, ho, ho! Merry early Christmas! For the past 12 years, Peter Ferracci has spent the month of December dressed as Santa. This year, Santa makes a special appearance in August. Ferracci is trying to raise money to fight an aggressive form of cancer that spread from his esophagus to his liver. This is what we've been known for, and we figured we'd give to the community for all these years, and this is what we're known for, this, so this is what we felt comfortable doing. His house is lit up like a Christmas tree, a familiar sight to those in Catskill. Well, we sometimes, we mostly came, we came by and usually uh, looked at the house because it was so, like, nice and it was, like, had, like, lots of colors and everything. Because it's gorgeous. And what you look at it and think, you can't imagine how they do this. But last Christmas, the usual 50,000 lights weren't on because Verace didn't feel well. December 26th, he found out why. He had cancer. And we really missed it. Missed it. And then when I read in the paper he was sick, I said, well, when we'll, we'll get down there. The summer Santa with steamy glasses hopes his goodwill toward men will come back around. Now, the address you see on your screen is if you'd like to help him fight his cancer. Peter Ferracci is undergoing treatment that only 100 other cancer patients have undergone. And if you'd like to send money, you can to Trust Co. Bank at P.O. Box 490, 345 Main Street in Catskill, New York, 12414. And 
send that attention, Kathleen Bagley, for the Peter Ferracci Medical Fund. And again, this benefit continues tomorrow night at their home, the Ferracci home, at 8 Willow Lane in Catskill. Back to you, Ed. But that's where you can go tonight and see Christmas lights, or tomorrow night. At tomorrow night, starting at 8 o'clock, 8 Willow Lane in Catskill. Just look for the lights. They're hard well, to miss. They probably are. Here in Lehan, live in Catskill, our best of Peter Ferracci as well. Thanks. A well-known retailer is facing a pretty hefty fine. I'll have details coming up. There's word of another hotel fire. This one has killed dozens. The numbers, in fact, still rising at this hour. The latest details at 11:12 and at 11:15, these Marines are laying their fallen comrades to rest. We'll tell you why this ceremony is so especially important to them. Live, local, late breaking with Ed Day and Lydia Colbita. This is News Channel 13, live at 11. News Channel 13 is sponsored in part by your Toyota dealer. Toyota, I love what you do for me. It's Toyota. Welcome back to what I'm afraid is a pretty depressing block of news that begins with news that more than 60 people are dead after a hotel fire in the Philippines. Many of the dead were packed into hotel bathrooms. They were apparently there trying to escape the flames. Firefighters have so far recovered 68 bodies, although they are still searching for more. A missionary group, which included people from the United States, was reportedly staying at this hotel. Some absolutely horrifying news out of Arkansas where a toddler is dead after an apparent beating by her six and eight year old cousins. The 21 month old girl was with the two boys when she died last night. But they say the father of the boys left all three children alone when he went to work. They say the toddler wet her pants and that the boys beat her with a belt. They told detectives they were allowed to whip the toddler when there were no adults at home. The, father's bo the boy's father is now facing charges tonight. The situation just as grim in Ohio, where police have arrested two 11 and 13 year old boys after the rape and murder of an eight year old girl. Police say the older boy raped the girl and that both he and the 11 year old killed her. The boys are now in custody, but they're not being charged as adults so far. Police say the girl's mother left her alone with those boys when she went to work. And a popular retailer is facing a hefty fine for allegedly selling dangerous children's clothing. CPSC has ordered the Limited to pay a half million dollars for importing and selling flammable sleepwear. These are not the pajamas in question. These we're using to show you how clearly dangerous flammable sleepwear can be. A company has already recalled the pajamas in question. If you would like more information, call area code 614-479 3739. Do that during normal business hours. Yet another American has been attacked by a shark off the coast of the Bahamas. The man now in a Miami hospital. Apparently he was in a boat with his wife near Grand Bahama Island when the shark attacked. This latest attack, though, not as serious as the one earlier this month. The man did, though, lose quite a bit of blood after being bitten in the lake. The whole time he was talking, the whole time he was talking, communicating, he wasn't out of it or anything. Or he was just normal, like, as though he got bit by a mosquito or something. Earlier this month, a New York man lost part of his leg after a similar attack in the Bahamas. The remains of 13 World War II Marines killed in the South Pacific are now at Arlington National Cemetery. Those Marines killed in an attack on Macon Island that happened exactly 59 years ago today. They were buried there after that battle, although three years ago their bodies were brought back home. Today, they were laid to rest in a special ceremony, the memorial significant because Marine Corps tradition dictates that no fallen comrade be left behind. Because now we know that we've done our job up to this point. We've not left anybody behind. Six other Marines killed in that same raid have been buried privately in their hometowns by their families. Coming up in Sports Large, we'll show you some dramatic plays from golfer Tiger Woods. First, some dramatic plays from meteorologist Bob Kovacic. Dramatic plays tonight oh, okay. on a Friday night. Good, <laughs> good luck. Well, off and running into the weekend, Ed. A pretty decent day tomorrow. Things go downhill on Sunday. We'll talk about that. And a stronger Chantel in the Caribbean coming up.
260 horsepower Acura CL Type S. When you see breaking news, we want to hear from you. Call the News Channel 13 tip line toll free on your cell phone at pound 1313. Hey, you're not the pizza guy. Eat a salad, kid. We're on a mission. At ease, folks. We're responding to a distress call from your bedroom. Ah, it's nice carpeting. Excuse me. Whoa, walnut, cherry, oak. You guys got more woods in here than my golf bag. People, you deserve better. Bedroom expressions. Good stuff, good prices. It's nice, huh? See the dresser's oak, the bed's oak. You picking up a theme here? Coming up, News Channel 13, first warning weather with meteorologist Bob Kavache. Two weeks into the project and he looks good. Fresh turkey good. Good coloring. Backside looks supple. Let's get this one back home. Well, that's not what your principal said. What's for dinner? Oh, looks like fresh turkey cutlets. All right. We're doing good work here. I can't even my grandma used to say, I want to bite that off and chew on it for a while. <laughs> when people walk through the door, I want them to feel like, here's a safe space. If you couldn't say it anywhere else, this is where you get to get it out. All right, we get to come talk about stuff. Ananda, coming September 10th to News Channel 13. Congratulations, Jim. Now you get to choose between the sleek German-engineered Volkswagen or a dream vacation to Paraiso Juvioso. Jim, the Volkswagen. Uh, the Volkswagen. Uh, the Volkswagen. I'll take fun in the side. No, 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 no. Idiota. Don't miss out on your Volkswagen. And if you visit your local dealer through August 31st, you own that deal. Welcome back to a small portion of what firefighters are facing out west. Wildfires are swallowing up thousands of acres in 10 different states. The fires have become so tough that the military has now been called in to help. Mm. All we need to do is get Hurricane Chantel out west. That would be a trick to get it would to be Washington a real trick. State. Another trick would be to have clear skies tonight where we can see the aurora that the satellite says could come our way. Well, there are some breaks in the clouds, some holes in the overcast. Well, so I a hope chance. some northern holes I'll be looking you're gonna for. You're going to stay up? Watch. I always stay up. Yeah, yeah you do. You go to bed at 6 a.m., right? <laughs> <laughs> in any event, uh, our weather edge is still a bit on the warm side tonight, but not terribly bad. Still 71 at the airport on the hour. We'll call it partly cloudy or partly clear. Some breaks in the clouds with a west breeze at 7. The dew point still in the low 60s. The barometer on the rise at 29.91. Bit of rain as expected this morning, 12 hundredths of an inch with an 83 degree high. That's right about on target. 97, the record high for the state. And the morning low so far today is 69. Again, right now we'll call it partly clear and currently at 71 degrees. Some showers around up north in the Adirondacks from Watertown to Messina. Also a bit of rain over in Vermont around Rutland. And some showers down south around uh, Boston and Providence area. But generally, Skies will call it partly cloudy and temperatures uh, on average, as you can see, for the most part between the mid and upper 60s in the Mohawk Valley, Binghamton, low to mid 70s here across the capital region. The morning rain obviously long gone. Still some spotty showers around and storms well to the east and a few popping showers uh, that have diminished in the past couple of hours progressing across the Adirondacks as well as in the Champlain Valley. Let's take a look at the pinpoint Doppler radar right now. Temperatures holding in the mid 70s at uh, Fort Edward. High school 68 in Amsterdam, 75 now in Nisky Unit, down to 64 in Cobleskill, 67 at Cairo Durham. So most spots in the upper 60s and low 70s. Not much, a few light sprinkles around, a little more concentrated shower activity in Hamilton County. That's heading off to the north, uh, perhaps across Warren County in the next couple of hours. Back to the uh, weather maps, national weather scene. It looks like the air over the Great Lakes is being cooled by clouds and rain. And it looks like we'll get uh, probably a shot of rain here. Timing pretty difficult, I think, for uh, when it'll come in on Sunday. Could be as early as Sunday afternoon, but certainly uh, Sunday night into Monday appears to be a period of wet weather. One system pulling on out of here would cause the rain today. That's moving on out. A decent day tomorrow. Mixed sun and clouds, warm, seasonably warm around 80. This next system will tend to be acted upon by an upper level bunch of energy that will drive it toward Ohio, strengthen it, and then drift it across to New York. Sunday and Monday, so that'll bring our next chance of showers late in the weekend. 
Chantel in the Gulf of, uh, not in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Caribbean, strengthening 50 mile an hour winds, gusts to 65, a uh, hurricane watch for Jamaica as Chantel heads west-northwest. Back weekend forecast in a moment. Dare to compare Mercury at the Mercury Summer Sales Event. There's low financing on every new 2001 Mercury, including Mercury Sable LS Premium with $1,495 in great no-charge features. Now with a lease of just $329 a month for 36 months with $658 cash to its signing. Then click on daretocomparemercury.com, where Sable LS Premium is over $5,200 less than Camry XLE. See your Mercury dealer and save thousands at the Mercury Summer Sales Event. All right, the rest of this Friday night, partly cloudy. We'll call it mild, some patches of late fog, 59-64. Pretty good Saturday coming up. Enjoy that day as the best day of the weekend. Sunshine, a few clouds, pleasant, not terribly humid at all, 78 to 83. Tomorrow night, partly cloudy, comfortable, upper 50s, low 60s. More clouds on Sunday. Eventually, we've got some showers. Could be as early as afternoon, but certainly by Sunday night, we'll be wet like the Red Sox in the mid-70s. <laughs> Shot! It's just raining in Boston, is that what you Yeah, mean? well, it's raining. Yeah managers and uh, <laughs> some rain uh, due here on Monday and trying out on Tuesday. That could be the best hope for the Red Sox. It rains for the next two and a half months. They are now irrelevant because the Yankees are going to the World Series. Think? I think that Me became too. perfectly clear tonight. <laughs> Sir Lars of Lifrak has yes. the story. Yankees looking very good. We'll show you the highlights as they take on the uh, Mariners in a clash of the Titans. Plus, the day from Saratoga and Tiger Woods in trouble at least for a while at the PGA Championship. At the end. There are certain events. Look at you losers. <laughs> You've got some processed gray patty they call hamburger when you could be having golden KFC original recipe chicken. Yours was microwave, but mine was slow cooked. What a dilemma. What would I choose? Yours is gray, mine is golden. Gray, golden, gray, golden. <sighs> Rediscover KFC Original Recipe Chicken. Get a 12-piece bucket for only $9.99. Please, share the bounty of my bucket. Yeah. There's fast food, and then there's KFC. Thank you, KFC man. This is what I do. Thank you, KFC man. This is what I do. Coming up, Big Board Sports with Lars Livrack. Look, I think that went really well. Anthony's Best Bet, brought to you by your local Upstate Ford dealer, where you can see the new 2002 Explorer. Welcome back. We will start with hockey news. It appears the Eric Lindros to the Rangers deal will finally be happening. The deal between the Flyers and Rangers will be announced Monday, providing it's approved by the NHL, which should not be a problem. The Rangers will send Jan Halavich, two minor leaguers, and a draft pick to Philly. Lindros will come in return and will sign a four-year, $37 million deal with the Blue Shirts. Next to a possible postseason preview from baseball, the AL West leading Seattle Mariners at the stadium to face the AL East leading Yankees. Seattle boasting the best record in the big. Shane Spencer not worried about that. Man on in the second goes deep. Two run shot, three nothing. Yankees have the lead and that's more than enough for Mike Mussina. Throws seven shutout innings, seven strikeouts. The Yankees tame the M's for nothing, the final. The Red Sox hosting well, Baltimore, third bad. inning. Jeff Conine with the single here. That uh, scores Jerry Hairston and Melvin Moore. Three nothing at that point in the sixth. The Sox closed with a six four, but it's raining there. A little weather video for you, and they've just main, uh, resumed play now. The uh, Red Sox trail six five in the seventh inning. Scoreboard: Anaheim beats Cleveland, Tampa Bay beats Minnesota, and Oakland knocks off Chicago. The Mets in the National League already losing big to the uh, LA Dodgers five nothing in the fourth. Houston beats Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia and St. Louis are tied three three. In the ninth, the Diamond Dogs hosting New Jersey tonight, and a tough one for the Dogs. Mike Church here, two on, tattoos one for the Jackals in the fourth. That one lands over the fence, a home run, three-run shot. Jackals win it 15-6, to six, the final. In the uh, other games, Northern League, Adirondack washed away in Quebec, and the New York Penn League also postponed due to rain, Pittsfield at Lowell. To golf next, and the Wacky PGA Championship, 
where it looked for a while like Tiger Woods would miss the cut, and one of the guys in the lead is wearing a hat that looks like it was stolen from Howdy Doody. Here's the hat in question. I think that is Howdy's. He's Shingo Katayama from Japan. Shoots a 6 under 64 tied with co-leader David Toms at 9 under par. As for Tiger, he comes up with two birdies in the last four holes, including this one on 15 to get the even par. The cut ended up being one over par. To football, the Giants off today. They'll hold practices again tomorrow at UAlbany from 3 to 5 p.m. The G-Men looking terrific in their preseason game against Jacksonville last night. Terry Collins completing 8 of 11 passes for 89 yards and that one touchdown there to Greg Camella on the way to a 27-5 win. Things going much better than the first preseason game. That was a shutout loss at New England. You know, from the start, we were you know, running the ball. We had a good tempo in the huddle. Uh, you know, seeing things well, seeing coverage as well, and uh, that's, why, that's why it went a lot better. Nearly 22,000 at the track in Saratoga today. The feature race, the West Point, a mile and an eighth for New York bred three-year-olds and up. Dr. Cat is giving chase. Brave one is there, too. I'm all yours with a remarkable run on the outside. Here comes I'm all yours. Reluctant from the inside. Here's the wire. I'm... So there, there it is. Jerry Bailey on I'm All Yours. Now with 32 wins for the Meet John Velasquez. Four winners today. He's got 30 tomorrow's feature. The Alabama Stakes. Here's Anthony Mormino's best bet. Saturday's feature, the 121st running of the Alabama Stakes. Three-year-old Phillies going a mile and a quarter. This is a terrific running. We have real cozy, tweed side flutes in here for Bobby Frankel. I don't recommend sentimentality get in the way very often, but I love flute. She's going to be a short price. She's not a layover in this field, even though Fleet Renee got scratched because of an injury. It's flute to win the Alabama on Saturday. All right, thank you, Anthony. And a couple of notes for you. Uh, Mike Tyson, the rape charges against him that were filed last month will not be pursued because authorities say they cannot be proven. And the next trade involving Glenn Rice has indeed gone through. He's passed his physical. Rogers pick, Yankees over Seattle 3-2 to two tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. That's, that will have them win two in a row. Yeah, that's what he said. Thanks, Slice. We'll take a look at tomorrow's newspaper headlines right after the break. Also show you a most unusual context. Big Board Sports on News Channel 13 is sponsored by O'Brien. Available at Klein's All Sports. It's a Welcome back. News that the city of Rensselaer has a bridge they want to say you. Tomorrow's TU will report the city is selling the old Herrig Street Bridge. Post are going to report that the village of Lake George halted plans to spray pesticide, afraid of making people sick. Berkshire Eagle will report on the completion of a parking garage at a regional hospital. The Bennington Banner reports a man running for highway superintendent in the area has quit the race. Turns out he's charged with assault. And finally, a familiar sound to many parents. Although most kids aren't quite that loud, these ones had to be. They were taking part in the annual mom calling contest at the Iowa State Fair. The gentleman you heard a moment ago is a former contest champion. You can do that or just do weather. I'll, I would think weather. I'll yeah. do the weather. Tomorrow, Ed, a pretty good day. Mixed sun and clouds, pleasant. No rain tomorrow, 78 to 83. Showers come in Sunday, probably afternoon into the night. Good chance of showers Monday, clearing on Tuesday, 78, 83. Nice day on Wednesday. That's it. Have a good weekend. Okay, will do. Lydia's back on uh, Monday. Uh, we're all due to be back on Monday. I hope you'll be here as well. Have yourself a great weekend and a good night. You're watching NBC, America's late night leader.